Welcome everyone, I'm Jan Weiler from the University of Bonn and in this talk I want to present our work about joint plant instance and leaf count estimation for infield plant phenotyping, in which we implemented a vision-based approach to localize crops and weeds in agricultural fields and simultaneously estimate the total number of leaves per plant to assess its growth stage in an automated fashion. The motivation of our work comes from the area of precision farming and plant breeding in which the assessment of the growth stage of individual plants plays an important role. In the context of precision farming, the growth stage is relevant for targeted management actions performed by agricultural robots in the field. For example, certain herbicides and fungicides will be most effective when applied at certain growth stages of the crops. Thus, agricultural robots must know the current state of the plant development. On the other hand, Plant breeders continuously generate new genetic variations of crops to keep the yields high. These variations are then planted and their performance is assessed. A key element to assess the performance and vegetative development of individual plants is to analyze the growth stage, which can be defined by the BBCH index. This index defines the vegetative development mainly by the number of leaves produced on the main stem. At the bottom, you can see an example of the BBCH index 10, where the crop developed its first two leaves. This index increases as the number of leaves increases as well. Especially in the context of plant breeding, the number of leaves is often assessed by manual inspections in the field at a subset of locations, which is not only time consuming, but also limited in spatial and temporal resolution. Other vision-based approaches rely on images taken in laboratory environments which capture single plants and apply methods to detect the leaves. However, this data has a limited validity since the environment is highly controlled in comparison to data captured on real agricultural fields. In our work, we implemented a vision-based model which can be applied to real-world field data captured by agricultural robots. First, we localize crops and weeds in the field by predicting their corresponding bounding boxes. Simultaneously, we predict the location of leaf key points and assign them to individual plants, which allows us finally to estimate the total leaf count at a plant level. First, I want to present our approach to localize crops and weeds in the field. For the task of object detection, we use a deep neural network based on the recently proposed CenterNet, which predicts the bounding box of an object by estimating the location of its top left and bottom right corner. This is a single stage model which feeds the input image to a feature pyramid network and predicts two heat maps, one to predict the location of all top left corners and another one to predict the location of all bottom right corners. Each heat map consists of two channels which encode crops and weeds such that all corner predictions for crops are in the first channel and all predictions for weeds are in the second channel. In order to compute bounding boxes from those corner points, we project each top left corner and bottom right corner with a high confidence score back to the input image. However, as you can see here, the location of the predicted corners are rather coarse since the spatial resolution of the heat maps is smaller than the input image, which would lead to non-tight bounding boxes. Therefore, we predict additional offsets in x and y direction and pick the predicted offset at the predicted corner location to refine its location. However, predicting bounding boxes from a set of top left and bottom right corners is a non-obvious task, since you can connect each top left corner to each bottom right corner to construct bounding boxes, which would lead to a high rate of false positive predictions. Instead, we need to find a way to associate top left corners and bottom right corners which belong to the same object. For this purpose, we additionally predict embeddings for each corner, which act like a feature descriptor. The network is trained with the objective of small distances between embeddings of top left and bottom right corners which belong to the same object. For example, given the predicted location of a top left corner in the heat map, 
we select its corresponding embedding and compute the distance to all bottom right corner embeddings and assign it to the nearest neighbor which finally gives us the bounding box. We do the same for the remaining corners to compute all bounding boxes. However, qualitative results show a high rate of false positive predictions since the visual pattern inside the boxes are not exploited by corners. To exploit this pattern, we predict another heat map, which predicts the center points of each bounding box, where again crops and weeds are encoded in two different channels. As before, we project the predicted and refined center point to the input image and define a scale-aware center region for each predicted bounding box. If there is no predicted center point within this central region, we reject the bounding box. Otherwise, we keep it. In this way, we can reduce the number of false positive predictions and estimate the bounding boxes for all crops and weeds on the field. Next, I want to present our approach to count the number of leaves for each detected plant we implemented a counting by detection approach, which first detect plant-specific leaf key points inside each leaf and finally associates each detected leaf to a single plant. First, in order to detect each leaf in the image, we apply an approach similar to the predictions of corners by extending the head of our network with another heat map, which has high scores at the location of leaf key points. Again, leaf key points of crops and weeds are encoded in separate channels. During training of the network, we first create a map of weights with unnormalized, isotropic, two-dimensional Gaussians placed at the ground truth position of each leaf key point, which stores a value of 1 at the ground truth coordinates and has lower scores for pixels which are close by. Finally, we apply a sigmoid activation function to the output of the network and compute the loss function as a variant of focal loss, where the previously defined weight map W reduces the penalty if the network predicts a leaf key point which is close by but not exactly at the ground truth position. Thus, we argue that a leaf key point close to its respective ground truth location can still be accepted as a valid leaf since its precise location is not relevant for the task of counting. At the right side, we show the training procedure of the network over multiple epochs and show how it's getting more and more confident about the leaf key point positions with an increasing number of epochs. After the network is trained, we apply it to the input image and project each key point with a high confidence score to the input image, which provides us with the location of all leaf key points. One approach to predict the total number of leaves for individual plants is to count all key points which are within a bounding box. However, this counting by detection approach fails in case of overlapping plants and leads to overcounting. Instead, we want to discard leaf key points if they belong to a different plant by associating them to a specific instance. This brings me to the last step of our approach. In addition to the heat map, we predict embeddings for each leaf key point which again serve as a feature descriptor. We train the network with the objective of small distances between all embeddings which belong to the same instance, shown by identical colors, and large distances between embeddings of different instances. To achieve this, we define a clustering loss function for training which has two objectives. First, we minimize the squared distance between corner and leaf key point embeddings which belong to the same instance. Second, we increase the distance between leaf key points and corner embeddings which belong to different instances. This push force is hinged. That means it is only active up to a certain distance denoted as delta. In the same way, we also increase the distance between all leaf key point embeddings which belong to different instances. By minimizing those objectives, all embeddings of the same instance are closer to each other than embeddings of different instances. Thus, we can associate them 
by computing the distance between embeddings. At inference time, we apply a simple post-processing procedure to associate each leaf key point to its corresponding plant. First, we remove redundant predictions in the heat map by applying a non-maximum suppression. We apply a max pooling operation with kernel size 3 by 3 on top of the predicted heat map and keep only those key points whose value is identical to its original value. Finally, we select the top end predictions by score and also extract the corresponding leaf key point embeddings. To match a leaf key point to a single plant, we refer to the set of previously detected bounding boxes and their corresponding corner embeddings. We assign a leaf key point embedding to the closest corner embedding if the distance is less than a predefined threshold and if the leaf is inside a bounding box. Thus, we can associate a leaf key point to its corresponding plant, even in case of overlapping plants. Finally, we evaluate the leaf counting performance of our model based on the difference in count between ground truth and prediction, as well as the absolute difference and the percentage agreement between ground truth and prediction. We also allow an offset of one leaf in the metric percentage agreement plus minus one and compare our model with a two-stage approach based on mask RCNN. Qualitative results, we show that our model outperforms mask RCNN in all metrics, leading to a more accurate leaf count with higher precision. In comparison to our approach, mask RCNN is not able to detect all leaf key points of crops nor weeds and is also less accurate in case of overlapping crops as shown on the right side. Finally, I would like to give a short summary. We implemented a vision-based model which analyzes the plant development in complex scenes on real agricultural fields by first localizing crops and weeds using a single-stage object detection approach. Simultaneously, we detect plant-specific leaf key points which we associate to individual plants. This enables an automated leaf count estimation for large-scale phenotyping. With that, I thank you for your attention.